we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Today, all over the church of Nigeria, we are considering the theme we are Christ's ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassadors. The text is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 and then we will read chapter 6 verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5 20. Now then we are ambassadors of Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. Chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Praise the Lord. An ambassador is the highest ranking person who represents his or her government while living in another country. The countries of the world, except harsh countries like uh, uh, some of these Arab countries where they persecute uh, foreigners. All countries of the world, they have representatives of all other countries or almost all other countries in the world. For instance, in Nigeria, you have the U.S. Embassy. You have almost, if not all the countries being represented in Nigeria, in the capital city. And these persons, they are high-ranking persons. Underline that word, high-ranking persons, which can be females or males. They have to be high-ranking because Anything they say represents everything about their home government and their country. So they are not they are not towns picked from the streets. They are people with high reputation, people who have been trained so that when they talk, they will be able to present their country very well. There is something I've come to understand that the message of the kingdom is having less impact today because many of us who are preachers and Christians, we do not value the vessel of the carrier of the message, but we give so much attention to the message itself. But if no matter how much important the message is, if the carrier of the message First, to represent the message he is carrying, there will be misunderstanding. If a president of a country wants to pass a message out, he will not send a madman. And in this kingdom, God will pick people and wash them before he will send them messages. And he will always say, who can I send? Who will go for me? Who is going to represent me? And somebody like Isaiah would say, Lord, here am I, send me. And then there is another process. After saying, here am I, send me, God will now open his nation of holiness and say, look, oh, me that is sending you, this is my nation. Look at my angels. They have six wings. They have to fly with just two. They have to cover their faces because of my righteousness and holy nation with, with shamefacedness. And then they have to also cover their feet because they are not perfect. And then when Isaiah will see these things, he will say, oh Lord God, look at how wretched and how poor I am. Lord, Peter said, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Whenever God calls, he will bring out his nature first and also bring out your nature. So that you can bridge the gap 
through his grace. And this is what happens to every one of us sitting down here. If at all all of us have encountered Jesus Christ on a personal basis. And then after then, God will now spell out his terms. What we call the Ten Commandments today, the main thing, the commonest name for them are the terms of agreement. The Old Testament, you have terms of agreement. What are the terms? I am going to be your God and I want to be your God. I want you to be my children. I have picked you, Abraham, and the whole of your children. And you must represent me in this world as my ambassador. And through you, I will reconcile the whole world back to myself. In thy seed shall all nations of the world be what? Be blessed. And then God said, for this relationship to be established and for it to hold and for it to last forever. This is what you need to do. The Bible I am holding now is in two parts. It is made up of the Old Testament and the what? New Testament. It is a testament, it's an agreement. It's a covenant. So all of us here, we have been called to represent Christ. What are the duties of an ambassador? Ambassador does the work of representation. He does not represent his own interest, but he represents the interest of who? The interest of his government. Remember, ambassador does not serve in his own country. He is, that one is not an ambassador. We as Christians, we have a home. This is not our home. The earth is not our home. We are just passing through in a moving tent. What is a moving tent? It's a flesh. In a moving tent, we are just passing through. And we have a home that we will go and our Savior will tell us, well done, good and faithful servant. All the other way around, which we don't pray for, depart from me, you workers of what? Of iniquity. These are the two welcomes. Then another one is to protect the citizens of your country. All over the world there are Nigerians. Even if you go to Iceland, Iceland, there are Nigerians there, especially Igbo. Yes, they are very hardworking people. They don't beg. Wherever there is money, they will pursue it there and bring the money out. Clap for the Igbos in the house. They also, when they protect the rights of their citizens, if you have any complaint and you are in a foreign country, if you do not go there through the desert means, eh? when you have your papers, you go to him and say, please, oh, you are the one representing us here. You are the bridge between our government and the government of this country. This is our problem. And he will stand up and call his own country and say, this is the problem we are having. They put it together. He will go to the government of the country he is residing and tell the government, this is our problem. We are for peace. You have our people there. We don't treat you like that. So they will settle immediately. Protection. Then they work for peace. Today, why there is no more share intertribal war is because of intermarriage. It's a big reason. So when you have your daughter in that community, you don't want to go and kill your grandchildren and kill your, uh, your own family. Then they also support the prosperity of their own country, even the country of, the, uh, of their residents. Angels in the Bible are seen as true representatives of God. Read your Old Testament very well. You will see where angels are being addressed as lords. And the Lord is with capital letter. Capital letter L. Look at uh, Jacob. When he fought with an angel, the Bible says he wrestled with God and did what? And prevailed. Why was the angel referred to as God, addressed as God? It's because he was representing the interests of God. He did not fight 
with the God of war who is almighty and prevail. He was fighting, he wrestled with the angel, the representative of God. Even the angel that appeared to Samson, to Samson's parents, eh? Manoah, he was addressed as Lord. The ones that appeared to Abraham on their way to Sodom and Gomorrah, they were appear addressed as Lord, not Lords, as a Lord. Because they represent God. Praise the Lord. Prophets too, they are seen as a mouthpiece of God. Whenever the prophet says anything, all the man of God stands before the congregation and says, Thus says the Lord. People will say, God has spoken. They will not say the prophet has spoken. Because they believe that he is a link between heaven and the sheep. Also, Christians represent Christ in every ramification of their lives. In every aspect of their living, they represent Christ in totality. And in Antioch, the Christians, when they saw them, pagans, idol worshippers, they saw them and said, these people are behaving like Christ. They are representing somebody. Today, we will call them Christians, which means little Christ, Christ likes. Are we representing Jesus Christ? What is our work as ambassadors of the kingdom? Number one, we have to represent Jesus and the kingdom of God in every area of our lives. The Bible says, let your attitude be as that of Christ. Your attitude, our character, our behavior should be that of the one we are representing. Paul said, the life I now live, it is not me who live, but Christ who lives in me. So for us to be able to represent God, Jesus Christ released his spirit upon us. The night he was betrayed, he broke the bread and he said, this is my body. You are going to represent me and I have to do something to this your nature that has fallen. He broke the bread and he spread himself upon the disciples. After giving his body, he now said, no, it is not enough for my body to become yours, for you to abide in the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. For you to abide, there has to be a link through blood. Any part of your body that is not connected to you by blood is not part of your body. So Jesus took the cup and said, this is my blood. That is shed for you. Drink it. And he gave it to them. The life of every living thing is in where? It's in the blood. So Jesus gave us his blood. He did not stop there. He gave us his word. He did not stop there. He also gave us his spirit. So that we can be the true sons of God. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the words. They are the sons of God. And after then he said, now you go into the world and make disciples of all nations. Remember what happened in the Garden of Eden. After God created man, man was lifeless. And God breathed into the nursery of man. And man became a living soul. God gave us his very life. And when Jesus was recreating man, the fallen man, from not looking like the first Adam, but to look like him, who was the second Adam, he breathed into them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Man was created on Friday. Is it not Friday? Eh? The sixth day. And Jesus died on Friday. And it is a recreation. He came to pour himself upon us and he finished the process so that we could go and represent him. And look at what happened. Even the disciples, those who were task collectors, they started behaving like Jesus. They started dressing like Jesus. They started talking like Jesus until there was confusion. It was not in Antioch that the people actually had the confusion. 
before they called the followers of Christ Christians. Even the Jews, they had this confusion. They thought Judas is Carol. He said, uh, they said, Judas, we don't know this, your master. He is a public figure. He does miracles all over the place. But do you know that we can't recognize him? All of you are looking like him. Because Jesus poured himself upon them. Why? Because he, they will be representing him. They were his representatives. And these 12 disciples set the whole world on fire today that the devil has not been able to quench. Give a clap of free for Jesus. And Judas Iscariot said, listen, I know him. I behave like him, but inside I am representing the kingdom of darkness. I am not his ambassador. I am a sheep. I am a wolf in sheep clothing. I am going to go there and kiss him. And the one I kiss, don't waste time before he enter the midst of the rest disciples. And you begin to ask me, where is he? Immediately I kiss him, hold him, and shame him very well. Remember, he could vanish. Do we have dua, people with dua citizenship? People who are in church, they dress like Christians, they talk like Christians, they represent Christ in their physical appearance, in their ways, but inside, they are not Christ. Do we have anybody here who just arrived from the coven this night and is sitting down here and listening to this sermon? Do we have any Judas in this place? If in the midst of 12, in the presence of the God of heaven and earth, there was still a Judas, even after Jesus took bread and said, the one I am going to give the peace of this Moses, that one is the one that is going to betray me. Judas ate that bread and got up, oh my father! Daniel said, the righteous shall be sanctified. But the, Daniel chapter 12, he said, but the wicked shall continue to be wicked. May the Lord deliver our souls. I said, may the Lord deliver your soul. I know a woman who attends sinners. And do all the necessary things she's supposed to do in church. Well known all over the Ajikiri and the, the diocese. I'm not talking about this diocese. But she is always the first one to get to the coven. Who pursued me in my life? Anytime I see her in church, that night I don't sleep. But it came to a time. After I encountered Jesus, I saw her eating. I said, I want to eat with you. She washed her hands and refused to eat with me. When she saw my eyes, I will not run before the devil every time. I am representing the kingdom of God most high. You are representing the same kingdom too. There is no communion between light and darkness. We don't have time. Uh, let me just run through this. They protect the interests of the kingdom of God. They protect fellow citizens of the kingdom. If they see Christians where they fall, they know they go hit them, make it die fast. They are agents of darkness. And most importantly, or of more of more importance, they are agents of reconciliation. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verses 18 and 19. I want to bring out something to you. Can you project it on the screen? There was a young man who grew up and had confusion in church. He grew up in church. His name is Anti Lave, and he is the founder of the Satanic Church. This is, he used to be in church, even as at about 16 years. He would go and play piano for carnival club in the evening, Saturday evening. And he would see the same Christians who would be dancing with guests. I'm talking about far back 1950s. Be dancing with guests. Married men with their rings. And this is what he said. Can you read it? On Saturday night, 
I would see men. Listen, let me apologize to you if you will be offended. This quote is directly from the Satanic Bible. And it's covered with the blood of Jesus already. On Saturday night, I will see men lusting after half-naked girls, dancing at the carnival. And on Sunday morning, when I was playing the organ for 10th show, evangelists, at the other end of the carnival, carnival lot, I would see these same men sitting in the pews with their wives and children asking God to forgive them and purge them of carnal desires. And the next Saturday night, they had be back at the carnival or some other places of indulgence. I knew then that the Christian church thrives on hypocrisy and that man's carnal nature will out. Times have changed. Religious leaders, pastors, no longer preach that all natural actions are sinful. All that wanting something someone else has is virtuous. Of course not. Times have changed. If you want proof on this, just look at how liberal churches have become. Why? They are practicing all the things that you preach. May the Lord deliver the church. Many churches with some of the largest congregation have the most hand clapping, sensual music, also satanically inspired. This is from the Satanic Bible by Auntie Lave, page two, pages two, 38 and 39. A lot of us have not saved a single soul, but we have succeeded in confusing thousands. This is a man who became confused and planted a seed that is fighting the church today. He has, Satanism is growing very fast. How are we representing Christ? How? Some of the things that used to be taboos in the church. Today, we pastors, we pour water into the loss of God and miss it and miss it. When we look at the congregation, say the congregation never plenty rich. We throw more water and miss it. When they come to us, uh, is masturbation sin? He said, no, 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 it's not sin. It's just your own body. Don't worry, sit down. We welcome lesbian. That one is a small one. We even welcome gay. Sit down, sit down. And today we are church of Nigeria and not the church of England. Because we throw water into the loss of God and miss it and miss it very well. Today we have a lot of, a lo a lot of mixture. A lot of mixture. Paganism, witchcraft in church. And sometimes we behave as if we don't see these things. But God sees them. He sees them. What is a Christian doing with demonic power? A Christian could talk to, not all Christians, so Christians could talk to a girl or a married woman. The married woman will lose her senses and follow you to a hotel. Are you a Christian? What if you are a teacher or you are a lecturer? And you say a girl must give you her body, even if she is having the max and she has paid all the dues that are legitimate, legitimately assigned to her to pay. You said somebody's innocent virgin should go and sleep with somebody, old man with pot belly and beer, beer with drinking beer every evening and defile another person's daughter. Are you representing Jesus or you are representing Lucifer? I was in one office trying to get a document on Thursday. Thursday. And then the person said, we, if you want to get it, uh, it normally is 25,000. But uh, we may not have forms until three months time. But uh, if you want to get it tomorrow, pay extra 10,000. Express. And you will get it tomorrow. So where is the form coming from? With the 10,000. The phone will now vanish from hell, not from heaven. And then you give me my document. The same people who sit in church, many of us who sit in church in the day are the same people who sit up there and in the top of trees to commit all the evils. And when you drive past what is, what is some kind of evenings, you see secret societies even along this road. In worry, Robert, uh, what is this road? Um, close to Bishop Scott, eh? you see one there and you see church members. 
And when you drive this road, get it close to what on about there. You see Christians with buluku dancing for what you do that we have driven into hell since 2,000 years ago. And you are worshiping that uh, tree there. And on Sunday, we'll still come to church. May the Lord deliver us. Christians are burying the church today. Me, I will not attend the burial. Let the church, when I die, let the church bury me. For the, the blood of the saints are the seeds of the church. If they stop killing Christians, Christianity will not grow. When you kill Christians, they will run. And they will run with the gospel. And the ones who spoil the name of Christianity will drop their Bibles. And the confusion will become less. Let us be honest. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.